Hello everybody. Welcome to Homesteading at Cooker Gahoofed. It is a lovely Saturday morning, a little bit chilly, so I put on a jacket. Today I was just kind of piddling outside after waking up early, not on purpose, <laughs> and was looking at the roses. And the Mr. Lincoln rose here is still beautiful, just a solitary rose on this um, second year plant, well, second year that I've had it planted. It started out more red, but it's turned pink. But roses catching my attention made me think, oh, hey, I don't think I've done a video on this. I want to show you how I deadhead roses after the roses have finished blooming. But first, let's go look at something I noticed today. This is the Martha Gonzalez rose that I planted last year. Now, it is a climbing rose, and I did have it going up on this chain link fence. But because Flo, our little goat there, decided she uh, would rather eat it than let it climb for me, right now it's just kind of hanging out doing more of a bush type thing. So we'll see how that goes. But notice the flowers, they're tiny, but they're pink. And all of them have been pink. Hello, Miss Flo girl. How are you, sweetie? How's my Flo girl? This one over here, I don't know if any of you remember, but it was a surprise to me this year. I was cutting back some things like this poison ivy and whatnot, and I noticed that there was a rose bush. I was like, oh, it's a climber and it's a rose, so let's just see. So I took a zip tie and zip tied it to the chain link fence here on the perimeter, and I the only thing I could assume was, all right, it's small leaves, it's a climber, maybe I put another Martha Gonzalez rose over here, even though I didn't remember it. It is possible that could still be what it is, because, you know, me not remembering is not unusual, but these are a very dark burgundy or red as compared to that pink Martha Gonzalez over there. So I don't know if this is a Martha Gonzalez. I don't know if it's a wild one. I don't know if it's one I planted years ago when it just finally came back. Anyway, whatever the case, I am thoroughly pleased. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the point of the video. So the Belinda Stream Rose has finished blooming, um, and so now I'm wanting to deadhead. Now, what does deadhead mean? Essentially, you're wanting to take off the spent blooms after they have completed blooming. That one is still um, unfurling from the bud and then there's a, an unfinished bud there. So we'll let those bloom before we deadhead them. But essentially what I do is I snap off the essentially rose hip that's there. Now I could let this ripen and become a good source of vitamin C for us. However, we have just started out the growing year. Um, it's late spring, well, mid to late spring, and I want my Belinda's Dream Rose to bloom again. Now, Belinda's Dream tends to bloom for us here two, maybe three times a year. But if you leave all the um, hips on there and don't deadhead it, it's not going to bloom as profusely the second and or third time. So a lot of people will actually snip the stem, but I prefer because I just come out here and piddle and play um, without any tools in my hand, other than, you know, my hands. I like to do what I learned at the Wichita Valley Plant Nursery in Wichita Falls, and that is you find where the stem is bumpy under the rose. The first one as you go down and you'll feel a bump, and that's a node, and you're going to just put your index finger and your thumb and you're kind of pinching but you don't have to squeeze and you're just bending it to one side and letting that node break on that node. Now when you pull it off that way it could just be the stem, it could have one leaf, it could even have multiple leaves okay when you break it off. It just depends on that particular node. Each node is different I'm going to say kind of like a fingerprint. And I usually just drop my spent blooms or these hips on the ground around my rose um, to compost in place. I don't add a whole lot of fertilizer. Um, I don't even put a lot of compost on this rose bush. It's just, sorry, which is probably why it um, takes a little longer 
or has taken it a little longer to establish. But this is just a good way to give back to my rose bush. Now, you could go ahead and compost these if you wanted to put them in a compost pile. And as you can see, I do have a little bit of fungal thing going on there. Um, so you may not want to put these next to your bush if you have that going on. I, however, do not worry about it. I want my rose bush to uh, develop a tolerance, or at least that's my goal. It, it, you know, it could backfire on me. But anyway, that's why I just let it do its thing, try to keep it as natural as possible. Um, I did cut my rose bush back a little bit in late winter, and that has been super beneficial, and we've definitely seen the rewards of that. But other than that, and pulling off the at least the first round of spent blooms, that's about all I do for the rose bushes. Now, I do plan on coming back in and putting some compost in this year since we got a load of compost recently. But that's about all I do. And then I just enjoy the roses when they come. Anyway, I hope you found that helpful. Remember, you just, woo. When you want it to bloom again, you pull off the spent blooms, come back from your rows till you hit a bump, fingers on both sides, and then bend to one side. And if you try one side and it doesn't go, then try the other side, and usually it'll come off one way or the other. All right, y'all have a blessed day. Thank y'all so much for joining me here at Cooker